Hi, I'm your host, Tom Laux for Connections, and thank you for joining me today. I have Jill Porter. Uh, she's going to be our new library director on June 6th. That's coming up real shortly, but she's been doing a lot behind the scenes, so don't uh, think she's not here working. Uh, we've uh, been in a lot of Zoom meetings, and she's been talking to the board as well as Lori, the current library director, as well as staff, doing quite a bit. But right now, she's in the middle of moving uh, from Michigan area. Uh, but this program is about get to know Jill. Uh, I brought it in on my connections program. It sounds like that fits pretty good. Connections. And uh, we welcome you, Jill, uh, to the city of Marshfield, our community. And I know that you'll enjoy it. What a great time to come by. The trees are getting green. Um, we don't have a river, but not very far from here, uh, 30 or 25 minutes, so, uh, but you don't need that. There's quite a bit of stuff. You have an awesome library that you're going to be part of, and I think that's going to keep you busy, but I don't want to talk too much. Jill, introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your family first, if you would. Sure. Um, I am a Michigander by birth. I grew up in East Lansing, Michigan, and rather than get involved in my split family where part went to U of M and part went to MSU, I actually went up to New York to go to college just to stay away from the fray. And after I graduated, I stayed in New York. I moved down to New York City and attended graduate school in library science. And I've been a librarian now for over 30 years. And a good experience. Um, Great. Uh, that's yeah. <laughs> awesome. I, I know I cut right in there because I just had to say that. But yes, please go. Um, I have no family. Uh, so this is I kind of look at this adventure as going when you go away to college for the first time and you don't really know anyone in your your college community or in your dorm. This is what it's going to be like when I come to Marshfield. That is going to be a change for you. And in your current position, uh, well, you're you're probably no longer, are you working yet or are you now? No, done? I've actually been on a two-year sabbatical. Okay. No wrong, nothing wrong with that. You're yep. learning quite a bit in that area uh, because that's, that you know, learning is all about uh, mm -hmm. what you do. Uh, the library is a place of learning and, and doing things. It's, it's, uh, in, it's like an informational center. Uh, it sure is. It's not just books anymore, and we'll get into that about what your insights, your thoughts, and mm -hmm. things you might want to do, and if you would share those with us. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you're packing now, I would assume, and uh, uh, you can get a little time over here before you begin on that June 6th, which is, I believe, a, a Monday. I'm, I'm guessing. It is I, a Monday. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a calendar in front of me, and uh, excited to uh, that first day to walk through those doors. What's that going to feel like, you think? It's going to be so exciting because we've post we've had to postpone this. Originally, I was set to start on April fifteenth, and shortly after I accepted the position, both Michigan and Wisconsin went into the stay-at-home restrictions. And so, Lori and I and the staff and the board have been communicating via email and um, Zoom meetings, of course. And so. I'm going to be really happy just to walk in that door, even with all the restrictions that the pandemic will put on the library and how many patrons we can originally or initially serve. Um, it will just be nice to see that the, the, the staff again and how patrons use the library, be able to spend a few days with Lori while socially distanced and sort of refresh myself. It's been a while now since I've been out there. Most definitely. It, you know, it's already been a few months since you mm -hmm. interviewed here. Uh, so it, would this be your second time then to the community of Marshfield? Um, in recent times, I actually had, ha I've seen the world's largest round barn many days. I have close friends who live outside of Minneapolis. And so driving through the UP, I tend to wander and saw the round barns before. So, Okay. Well, again, we welcome you, and uh, we're going to chat with you about some of your, uh, uh, I don't want to say changes, because that's not something anybody does right off the bat. We all know that. I, I didn't just make a major change within a day. We'd probably be kicked out. <laughs> but um, 
uh, you know, what are you, what are your, what are your thoughts for the first month on your job? What are you, what are you looking to do? Uh, you know, a lot of this will be driven by the COVID um, restrictions and how we see things play out as more businesses and organizations are able to open up. Um, because we'll be doing more limited programming and really focusing on the online programming rather than live programming, um, it will be looking for different opportunities to expand some of that. But beyond that, um, I really want to approach this as I would have under normal conditions and spend the first month really getting the lay of the land, getting to know the library, getting to know the community members, um, the board members I haven't met. Uh, there are the different organizations and associations that the library belongs to and getting to know that structure, getting all my meetings all lined up, <laughs> which ones I need to be at and um, really proceeding along those lines. Further down the line, um, the strategic plan is something that we have, I know is up for review and I'll be talking to the board about how they'd like to proceed with that and how we can reach out to the community to find out what changes they might want to see in the services that we provide. So it'll be an interesting time. Yeah, and that's a good time for you to come in if, uh, you know, for a new strategic plan, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, that's always reviewed no matter what. But uh, it's always good to uh, revamp that totally. A lot mm -hmm. of times they'll last four or five years and you'll tweak them as you go. Uh, but now you're, uh, you know, you're coming into the end of that strategic plan. The library has been here for quite some time now, uh, you know, redone, built and uh, now there's some time for uh, change. I don't want to say change, or, uh, but just something new. Uh, right. new, new, new ideas uh, are always good, but you're looking for the public's input down the road, I bet. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. I mean, the library's there for them. Exactly. Do you see yourself uh, going to be out on the floor? Or are you going to be able to meet a lot of people? I, and that's always hard to say because uh, you like to do that, I'm sure or people do. But, it, you know, if Lori was watching, she'd say, well, you have a lot of meetings. Uh, good luck with all that. I understand. Well, same with my right. boat, in my boat. But are you going to be one of those that like to be out there? And, and I really do. Um, I like to see how people are using the library. I think it's good for them to know who's behind the leadership of the library. And if you squirrel yourself away in an office that doesn't always bode well. And so I've already um, signed up for some adult reference shifts. Um, so that will be one way to keep my hand in the mix as well as attend the administrative meetings. And I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, definitely. Well, libraries have changed over the years and more more now than ever, not just with COVID-19, it's, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's before that. Um, I was maybe alluding to you, I think, online here as, as more of a, like an informational center, a place mm -hmm. where people can get information, not just from books, uh, but also a learning environment too, or what shall I say, a maker's space is, is getting very common amongst libraries. What, what are your thoughts about uh, things like that? I think they are definitely services that we need to be looking at. Um, in terms of the online offerings, uh, I think Marshfield's library is in a really good space. Um, with, through South Central Library Services, you have a really good system and backbone of different materials that are out there. And one of the things I would like to do is help promote some of those online services. Um, one of the things, and it happens in every library, that the big library users tend to get used to a particular service, whether it be print items or maybe they're hoopla fans or they learned how to use overdrive for ebooks. Um, but there are some other things out there. When you show those services to people, they're like, oh, I never knew it was here. And so really promoting some of those services, especially if we end up being on lockdown or modified lockdown in the next year or two. I think these will be good things to promote. Um, maker spaces. <laughs> I love them. 
my uh, prior library was getting really getting into them when I left a couple of years ago. We went as far as lending musical instruments to people. We had a lot of maker spaces and robotics programs for a huge um, regional robotics program and maker space program that had really grown over the prior years. And I would love to see something, something like that in Marshfield. Um, the teen area is something I always think that we can work to expand. They always tend to be a little bumpy to get started. And, but I see that Marshfields make good inroads in expanding the services they offer there. And while the building wasn't built with a teen room per se, they've done a good job of arranging the shelving and the seating so that the teens feel like they have an area that's a little bit more their own. So I'd like to see more of that. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. And that, that's just a, you know, a little piece for our viewers because uh, like I say, the, the libraries uh, have changed, uh, especially from the days when I remember, and I'll, I'm dating myself, encyclopedias, card catalogs. It's kind of funny. I was watching Ghostbusters the other day, uh, <laughs> and, and the card catalog was all coming out. If, I, if you watch that program, I was like, yeah, I remember those days. My kids said, what's that? <laughs> and I said, oh, you just wait. You'd have no idea what that was like. I wish we could uh, teach... Uh, some of that uh, back in the day because you learned a lot by using card catalog. You really did. Um, there was a ton of, and actually my first job was filing catalog cards at a library. So yeah, yeah, I was watching that and I just, I just, it, <laughs> I was like, Oh, that, that's funny. But anyway, I had to bring that up, but yes, back to the makerspace, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, even I'm, uh, I'll just uh, say I, I, I think it's a great idea and I would lo love to work together with you and our <clears throat> on what we do. There's a lot of cross with, uh, with community media and libraries nowadays. Sure. Ever. And uh, when I worked in Wisconsin Rapids, which a lot of people are, are aware of, uh, I helped start their makerspace with their uh, assistant library director, which is relatively new at that time. And we got a mm -hmm. grant and, and they, it really went to town. Uh, uh, they, we had video and we had, uh, but the one big thing that was neat were the, were all the uh, animation and, and 3D printing. It oh, was, sure. It was awesome. So uh, ho hopefully, uh, I mean, down the road, that'll happen. I, I, uh, it, I so new here to, to start something like that with Lori and, and uh, you know, I was, it, this is a good chance I, that it gives me a, a, over a little year and a half over my belt. Uh, uh, maybe that's something that we can uh, work together on. Mm -hmm. We have so much stuff here as a way to learn in community media that most people maybe not be aware of. Uh, I, I play two roles. I, the communications director for city and in their events and, and what they do as a city. And then I'm the public access, which are similar to what you do for the library of, of working with the public on, on activities and, and events and public and, and promotion, that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think we got a lot of things that we can provide a learning opportunity uh, for our, our citizens of Marshfield. Great. And I, I, I mean, I really, really value the partnerships that you can build not only within the city organization, but also with other organizations in the community and even other businesses in the library that you can sometimes partner with to do programs that the library might not be able to do on its own or do as well. So I look forward to exploring those relationships. Yeah, most definitely. And, and uh, it, it's nice to have that piece uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's a, that separation that allows us to to do that and um, and bring that information uh, to residents in many ways and and encourage uh, I'm a big part of engagement I really think that's important into the world we live in is getting community engagement leaders uh, new people on board to what uh, what the government's about and also what whatever what we do as leaders you myself police fire you name mm -hmm. it uh that's how a community will grow uh, yeah. and 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 getting their ideas like you said earlier you're going to get a lot hear from them when it when it time, come times when the time comes excuse me about your strategic plan and uh, i think that's vital to have public input uh when that comes when that time comes so 
but that's good information. But back to you, Jill. Uh, you know, let's, uh, we got some time. I kind of want to just go back uh, to the years. You said you started with cataloging. That's one of your first mm -hmm. uh, pieces in the library. Um, but what about, uh, do, w were you always wanting to be uh, something in the library when you were growing up or, or a different career? It was, I think when I was younger, I thought I would be an author and actually coming out of college, I worked for a couple of big literary groups. Um, however, I knew deep down in my heart, I wasn't willing to put in that kind of work and suffer as much. And what happened with me is I was, I think, I, you know, that second cruddy job you have out of college and I was talking to a good friend of mine from college and her mother happened to be Dean of the University of Wisconsin Library School at the time. And she had said to me, she said, you know, you really ought to look into library school. And um, it really made, it actually, a lot of it just clicked. I was a bookmobile kid growing up. We lived on, in an unincorporated part of Lansing, Michigan at the time. So the Capital Area District Library didn't exist. It only had a downtown branch. So my mom took me to the bookmobile. I think it was every other Friday morning at, in the parking lot of a department store. And um, bookmobiles. And then I volunteered shelving magazines when I was in junior high school. And otherwise, I, I just loved hanging out in libraries. There's something about all of the different things you can explore that and different ideas and learn new things that really attracted me. So no surprise I ended up here. <laughs> That's great. That's great. You'll have to visit my uh, hometown library. Uh, glass floors is, is what it used to be, if I remember right. Pretty neat. And you'd think you'd fall through, but the whole, all the library books were on glass floors, if I remember right. Don't Very know if it's that neat. way anymore, but uh -huh. pretty old library. Uh, it had a dome and all. So I think it's still that way in Winona. Minnesota. Oh, neat. Yeah, really yeah. neat. So, um, but I haven't been in there in, oh, probably 30 years. <laughs> I'm dating myself. But anyway, um, that's cool that you, uh, you always had that interest uh, growing up in, in, in libraries, books, that kind of stuff. Uh, let's go beyond that. What do you like to do beyond that? Do you, uh, do you, what are your hobbies? I laugh. I always say I'm the quintessential uh, stereotype of a librarian. I uh, have a cat. <laughs> Okay. I also like to knit. Um, I also hand spin because knitting's not strange enough as the joke goes. And um, pretty good gardener. I uh, have some pretty nice vegetable and floral gardens here, which I will miss, but I'm looking forward to building some new ones in Marshfield. Uh, love to ride my bike. I travel. I have traveled quite a bit. I still haven't been to Antarctica or Africa, but they're on my bucket list. But have covered most of Europe and a lot of Asia, North America. So a little bit of South America, not enough, but it's a big thing for me. That's neat. And maybe uh, someday you'll be able to share your uh, pictures, uh, maybe, if, you, if you're willing, or, or something of, of that, of your experiences in those uh, areas. Because some of those areas, not everybody gets to see. Just a thought, right. uh, or maybe it's a program at the library down the road. Who knows? Um, <laughs> I have some be, great pictures from my time in Russia that would be wonderful to share. It would, and, and, and uh, there's, you know, we have a great uh, historian-style historian kind of program here with our, with, uh, with, with the city involvement. So you'll be able to see a lot of that. Those programs have taken place over at the library. Uh, we work with uh, several of those people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're gonna find that very interesting to learn a lot about, about the history of what we live in. Um, that, where the we local live. history room was a big attraction for yeah. me because I absolutely love it. And when I walked in there, I was just like, oh, <laughs> this yep. is wonderful. Yeah, so it's very good, very good stuff. Any, so you uh, like to get outside, bike, uh, winter, are you more inside uh, like your cat? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even like going outside when no. it's nice out. Something will get her. Um, no, I love to snowshoe. I ski cross country and downhill, so yeah. Well, well, you're right in place because we have a ski hill, what, 30 minutes north of here? Good That's size. Nice. Oh, it's very good size. Granite Peak. And uh, uh -huh. I bet you there's 80, 90 runs 
Uh, I used to live there in the 90s and it, it just exploded into what it is today. I think Wonderful. you'll find that uh, really good. And then there's one south of here and there's one north of here. Uh, there's plenty of them and then there's, you know, the small little hills too. So uh, we get plenty of snow. I'm sure you do as well. So uh, yep, a little spoiled because I'm bit, I am literally in my five minute bike ride to Lake Michigan. So we get a little bit of the buffer. Um, but yeah. There are well, times. <laughs> well, you do like biking, I hear. So there are some trails uh -huh. and nice walking trails to go on. And uh, you hope to be uh, biking uh, into work a lot if you can. Is I sure am. Okay. Looking so, forward to that. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, it, uh, our city, close to the size that you're coming from, uh, we're about 19,000 people here. Uh, in Marshfield, that's not saying the outside uh, close-knit communities. but. Mm hmm yeah, um, I'm in Leelanau County, so I think my village, which I actually live five miles out of, has a population, I think, of 800, but Traverse City, which is where I worked and where I was assistant director of the library there, um, that population for Traverse City is, you know, 17,000 probably in the winter and about 900,000, it seems like, in the summer when all right. the tourists arrive, but um, yeah, so fairly similar sized. Okay. Any other thing you want to share about yourself uh, that maybe uh, you want people to know that may not ever get to know? Um, I, I, I'll open that up to you. I know you said you, you uh, have a cat and uh, <laughs> and uh, like biking and, and uh, knitting and stuff like that. I'm sure there's a season or a holiday you like as well better than others. Oh, um, my favorite season, since we have so many in Michigan and probably the same with Wisconsin. Um, I'm, oh boy, um, they all have their points. I would probably say fall, favorite holiday, hands down Christmas. And probably something that no one would ever guess about me is I have a really stellar collection of 1970s, early 80s British imports of punk and post-punk records and memorabilia. Oh, wow. Well, that'll be, <laughs> that is neat. Nope, people would not know that, but this is why we wanted to get to know you, Jill, get to know Jill. Uh, for those uh, that will get to meet you uh, <clears throat> when they come in, and uh, we hope the library is open then. At that time, I know it's going to be planned to be open before then, which we mm -hmm. talked about, which is the 29th of May. You won't be here. Uh, in the, that uh, chair, I shall say, uh, at that time, uh, but you'll probably be almost to the area or moving in uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you got to have a place to stay and you don't want to be living uh, in a <laughs> hotel <laughs> per se too long if you had to do that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, there's all, you know, a lot of things that, that are going to be coming up for you right away when you walk in those doors on June 6th. Mm-hmm. So, but no yes, doubt. thank you. Punk records. That's pretty neat. I'm glad you shared that. And uh, maybe uh, people are watching, uh, uh, will be able to uh, maybe relate. Maybe they have something similar <laughs> uh, uh, to share. So um, otherwise, any kind of outdoors, you like gardening, you say, uh, you're gardening. a good gardener. I think the thing that I will probably miss the most about living here is the five minute bike ride to Good Harbor Beach um, on Lake Michigan, but uh, it's almost a daily occurrence for me. Um, and one thing I think I'm going to have to explore in Marshfield are fat tire bikes so I can ride in the winter as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, those are pretty popular uh, around here. You see them from time to time. Uh -huh. Although our winters of you know, they last the year before was quite uh, a little bit more difficult, I should say, mm -hmm. to get around. This one wasn't so bad. Uh, you know, it depends. You know, you just don't know. And with this uh, COVID nineteen hitting in really late March or so, our middle of March, things just changed so much. We haven't had a snowstorm. Well last three weeks or so I think we had something was kind of but now we're on for 70 degree weather and I believe that's what you're bringing us yeah <laughs> uh, no you'd be sending to us oh okay so you're a little bit uh, <laughs> colder 
<laughs> and like I say, uh, for those that may have uh, tuned in this morning, and we're taping this uh, in uh, on a Wednesday in, in May, uh, there was a flood in the Michigan area. Now, you're not close to that, is that correct? No, that is further down. I am in the tip of the little, well, you know, Michigan in their midst. Um, I am the tip of the little pinky, and that's more towards the thumb area. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to visualize where that is. Uh, how Let's about see. for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm up here. Okay. And traveling down in Midlands, eh, okay. about right there. So. Okay. So where is on uh, that on your hand <laughs> is our map? <laughs> where is uh, Mackinac Island and the bridge? Okay. So now we need two hands. Okay. So you're way up there. Okay. No, Got I'm it. not. This is the Upper Peninsula. Yep. This is okay. the and I'm here. Yep. And Mackinac Island would be right about there. If I. Okay. So that's yeah. quite uh, a, a, a mileage. It's not real close. Have yeah, you, uh, it's about a nine and a half hour drive. Yeah. Have you taken the the uh, ferry across? I haven't, and I was hoping to. Yeah. Um, actually, with my move, just to cut down on the driving a little bit because yep. I will have my little U-Haul trailer with me, and they had to delay service because oh. they weren't sure how they were going to open. So. I'll be making the drive through the UP. Oh, that's too bad. It is. I've done it a few times. It's pretty fun and interesting. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, not moving, but just kind of uh, visiting, and and it's a quick way to get uh, over right. uh, to Mantawak, if I remember right. It's been a while. Is that well, that would have been the express ferry then, rather than the Badger. Yeah, or? maybe it was. And this is like okay. I'm thinking uh, tw 15, maybe oh, maybe 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, when I had my, I'm just I'm thinking of the car I drove, and I don't have that anymore. And, <laughs> and we lived in my wife and I lived in Wausau. We didn't have kids, so uh, I'm dating myself again. But yeah, and anyway, yeah, there was the Badger at, at that time. I think right, one, right. But, but yeah, great. Well, I'm so uh, happy that we had a chance to talk and share this uh, with our community out there uh, through our channels of communication. And I will be uh, giving this to the library if they'd like to use it on their Facebook page. Okay. And, uh, and but I, I guess, you know, as time's running out, my little clock popped up again about recording and telling me we only have so much time. And uh, anything else that you want to say? Uh, before you get here to get to know Jill. Well, I just want to say thank you for having me. I look forward to our conversations and also getting to know the community. So please stop by once I'm in place. <laughs> yep. And if you need any help, uh, uh, just uh, look us up uh, at the city. I'm sure there's a lot of us over there that'd be willing to uh, give you some assistance if needed. Don't be afraid uh, uh, to help out. I know what it's like uh, <laughs> when moving or trying to find something or a good restaurant uh, to go or good food, where do, where do you go? Or uh, It's easier from someone that knows the area, but I'm sure uh, with Lori being here for a long time, uh, mm -hmm. we'll, gl we'll gladly help you out. She's a, a great person to do that. So great. thanks again. And uh, we're going to sign off, Jill, and we're going to catch up with you in June, but we're going to let you uh, uh, get in. We're not going to uh, come right in there on June 6th. Uh, we want you to get settled and and uh, we'll bring this uh, a show back if you're willing. Uh, we'll see what our viewers want. That's what we really need to find out. So you and I will figure out that maybe in later okay. in June or July uh, what our viewers, but we have so much uh, we don't know because of COVID-19. You and I, we, if we could tell the future, things would be different, but uh, we'll see where that goes and what our people are want. Uh, from us in regards to communication about the library, if they want to show or they want video or they want uh, news, who knows? But we'll, we'll figure that out together. And uh, again, thanks. Sounds great. Thank you, Tom. Alrighty. I'm communications director for the city of Marshfield. And I had a chance to sit down here with Jill Porter, our new library director. It's going to be starting on June 6th. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>